So guys, here I'm going to perform the RPM test. Turning on the laser, this, okay. So we are doing at present 4,000 RPM. Let's increase it further. 5,500 RPM, more. 6,700, more. 8,700 RPM, very high speed, more. We are reaching 11,000 RPM. Let's go more. 12,700. 13,500 RPM. Let's go even more. 14,500 more. Let's go a little higher by increasing the voltage because the speed is full now. 16,000 more. So 16,000 is the max I'm doing here. Well, it was actually AAA battery type, but I converted it into a rechargeable one. You see the provision for charging and a lithium ion batteries and the on off circuit. Hi guys, you are watching channel Mr. Electron and today I'm planning on salvaging components from an old CPU that has been lying around for 10 to 15 years. It's really old and is no longer in use and I'm specially interested in its power supply. But uh, let's see what else can I find there. So here we have it, a floppy drive 2003, an LG CD-ROM drive 2002, a computer power supply 2003 once again and lastly we have this 12 volts motherboard cooling fan. Now I would really like to open up a floppy drive and look what is inside because I have never done that before. Although I have done the same thing with uh, the CD and DVD drives many times. So that's how your floppy drive looks from inside and I'm not going to go in details so let's proceed further. Now I'm going to test this motherboard cooling fan 12 volts with my variable power supply link for which will be provided in the description you can check it out and buy it from there. And as you can see that it is working quite nice which is good. 
finally comes our main power supply for which I am actually making this video. So let's open it and see how it looks from inside. Now guys, the serial number for this power supply has been provided but even if we consider the lowest one, we are going to get a max of 12 volts and 6 amperes and 10 amps at 5 volts which is quite good. Oh, it's uh, really dusty and I expected nothing less. So after cleaning it up, let's check if it is working or not. So the first step is to take off the wire bunch from its slot. After that being done, you have to cut the wires in such a way that you remove only the end pin outs. Yeah, you have to remove the zip ties as well. Now for understanding this wiring, we will have to open up these screws, this one, this one and all, to look what is below the circuit. I mean how these wires have been connected to each other. That can be seen how they have been soldered on the second layer of this PCB. So let's remove the screws. It is really important for full utilization of your power supply. So let's take it off. So guys, I have understood the wiring completely except for these two wires. I don't know what these uh, two are used for. The rest, here it is. I have to mark it all though. Let's place it back in and then do it. So guys, I've placed it all back and I'm also done with the labeling. This green wire is the start wire. The red one is your plus 5 volts. Blue is minus 12 volts. White is minus 5 volts. Yellow is plus 12 volts. Orange is plus 3.3 volts. And finally, your black one is your overall ground. I uh, still don't know what is the use of this wire and uh, the grey one so I'm going to leave these two behind and I'm going to utilize the rest of them. So guys it's time to power it up. You're also going to need this connector cable. It fits in here and plug it in and turn it on. Oops it didn't start. I have to connect the start wire and when it starts the BLDC fan that you see the exhaust fan it is going to start running. So you have to take the green wire you see I've already stripped it and one of the black wires and then it starts. So it's running. So what you have to do is connect it permanently. I'm going to turn it off and take one of the black wires out of so many present twist it like this. Now let's test the power supply. Now guys, I have this car headlamp bulb, 12 volts, 60 watts. So let's connect this one and see how it works. Yellow wire is plus 12 volts and uh, ground is common. So, yeah, you see. So let's do the multimeter check for uh, the exact output volts. And here we have 12.8 volts DC. Now we have our red wire which is positive 5 volts and here we have 5 volts exact. Now comes with the orange wire and here we have 3.4 volts. Now comes uh, the important part uh, the negative 24 volts. Let's test this one. Negative means black is going to be connected over here and positive over here and we have our 24 volts output. <laughs> oh, that is nice. Now I just figured out one more thing. Connect one wire to the negative 5 which is white wire and uh, the positive to positive 12. And here we have our 18 volts 17.85. Now let's connect it to the red one 10.18. Blue it is minus 6.88. So if we reverse the polarity we will have plus 6.88. Yeah. And if I connect this red one to the orange one we have 8.48 volts. Now guys, let's start with some practical applications. Application 1. Charging of AA and AAA battery cells. 
now guys if i choose two different wires one plus 3.3 and the other one as plus 5 volts the combination is going to give me 1.6 volts and with this i can charge my 1.5 volts double a and triple a batteries so here the cells are connected red is connected to positive 5 and green is connected to orange now to know for sure that it is actually charging my cells what i'm going to do is connect the meter pins one to negative and other to the positive and here we have 1.261 now if it is going to increase it will indicate that yes it is charging so i will have to wait and here we have 1.262 second application charging your 3.7 volts battery for which you are going to need the 6 amperes diode now this white wire indicates negative 5 and this black is ground if we check the voltage and the output as you can see is uh, only 4.9 volts so what i'm going to do is take this diode and because black is positive this time so this diode is going to create a 0.7 volts drop making it only 4.2 which is needed for our lithium ion battery for full charging so here i'm going to use two cables black and white black will represent negative of course so negative five to jumper cables link for which is in the description and the white is for negative of the diode so we have white one overall positive and black overall negative and the battery this side is positive you see there is a little indication of the positive yeah so our cells should have started charging let's check it so here i've connected the meter pin outs and it's showing here an increasing voltage it has reached four volts and increasing now the third application is the use of the five volts wire which is the usb so we all know what this is going to be used for charging your cell phones or headphones so i'm not going to get in details you can also charge your six volts lead acid batteries by using a combination of white and blue and the output is 6.74 and here is our 9 volts combination DC output at the yellow and orange which can be used for charging our 9 volts batteries. Now comes the 12 volts. So this is plus 12 volts and this is ground. Now this one is my 80 watt night eye car headlamp bulb. See it is so bright. Oh very bright. And guys, please note that for best performance output from this power supply, make sure that you solder the similar colored wires like all the yellow wires together, all the red and all the black together. Because my model as you can see here is this dot indicating 480x. So it is 5 volts, 20 amps output. 12 volts 10 amps and max up to 300 watts so obviously i will need to solder all of them together to get the highest possible current output oh. now guys this motor is 22 amperes motor 12 volts 22 amps Whoa. Whoa. yeah it is like pulling my hand upwards very Extremely high thrust. That's a really great salvage. So guys, now comes the testing part for our 24 volts motor. So let's connect it and see. And the wires we are going to choose here is the yellow one which is positive 12 and the blue one which is negative 12. So together the difference is going to be 24 volts. Here you see. It is working quite nice. So guys, this is a 36 volts, 15 amperes motor, again from an e-bike. I've already connected one wire to the positive 12 volts and now comes the negative 12 volts, which means that I'm going to run it at 24 volts instead of its rated 36 volts. So let's connect it. Oh, a very high inertia.
and now comes the final part can we charge a 12 volts battery and the answer to that is yes of course so here i have placed a multimeter take one cable of the multimeter and one negative 12 volts wire you see negative 12 volts okay and hold it like this so it's held there now take the other one which is positive and connect it to the plus 3.3 and here we have our 15 volts dc so all we have to do is reduce it a little bit so take the diode and focus on the gray side and the terminal of that which will be connected to the negative 12 wire after that comes your battery so the negative wire will be connected to the negative terminal of the battery now here i've also connected a multimeter i mean one of its terminals which is black to the negative and the diode is just behind it if you can see here now i'm going to connect the other terminal and the multimeter is showing 11.94 volts which means it is completely discharged so let's connect it and when i'm going to connect this wire like uh, i have connected this white wire to the orange one which is the 3.3 to this terminal of the battery positive terminal and if it shows change in voltage means it is charging and here as you can see that the voltage is increasing rapidly so I will have to leave it connected for longer duration and yeah it is charging the battery quite good hi guys in my previous video you saw me open this floppy drive so today i'm going to open it further and look what else is inside that i can salvage Now guys, if you look closely, you will see this GND term, which is for ground and is soldered to this white wire. So this is going to be our negative, overall negative. And as for the positive, it is 5V, positive 5 volts. And let's give you a closer look. So here, as you can see, this is plus 5 volts, which is soldered to this yellow one. So let's try white and yellow and see if it works. So guys, that's my 5 volt supply that I'm going to use to test my BLDC motor from the floppy drive. And links for the components used in this project have been provided in the description. You can check it out and buy it from there. So seems like that it is not working. Therefore, I'm planning on using an external driver, BLDC driver. This piece is for hall sensor. Now guys, this what you see is my dead soldering iron and I'm going to reuse its bit. Because as you can see that the space between the armature poles is very small and I have to desolder the thin wires to take out the armature.
Now guys, this one is my working soldering iron. So here I'm going to replace the bit with the one I just made. So guys, at present the RPM is at only 12.3 volts. Let's increase it. More. 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 Now guys, to measure the RPM at which uh, the disk is running, here I've placed this black tape. And this is the open area that is going to reflect the laser back to the tachometer. So guys, here I'm running the motor at 17 volts. And here I have uh, around 6000 RPM. Nineteen point one volts. We have fourteen thousand RPM. <laughs> <laughs> 